in example three and four in this page, in example three we're asked to write this, uh, the logarithm that we're given uh, of a certain project quotient as the sum or difference of logarithms. So we're actually using those laws in the reverse order. So for example, in A here, we have the log base A of AB. So the product is AB. So we only have two factors at A and B. So the only way to write that is as a sum. It would be the sum of the log of A and the log of B, of course, both base 8. Now in B here, it isn't AB, it's 24. And there's more than uh, two pairs of numbers that multiply to 24. Uh, a pair that do work, oh I forgot my restrictions here. Uh, the restrictions here would be, for this one, would be that uh, the A quantity and the B quantity could both be non-zero. You can't take the logarithm of zero because if this was zero, the answer to that logarithm would mean what power do I raise eight to to give me zero? And of course there's no value for that. You can't raise eight, a positive number, to anything and get zero. You can't get a negative either. So that's why you can't take the logarithm of a zero value. Now in B here, we're, we would really search for a, a pair of factors that add to 24. Uh, it was pretty easy in A here because A and B, well, the factors are A and B. Um, I could write this as a log of 8 plus a log of 3, of course, both base 6, because 8 times 3 works to 24. Another possibility is, of course, that I could use, instead of 8 times 3 is 24, I could use 6 and 4. The nice thing about using 6 and 4 is because this number is the same as the base here, so the log of 6 base 6 should equal 1. And so this is actually 1, so we can simplify this and to just 1 plus the log of 4 base 6. So that I have a couple different possibilities, and of course I guess I could have used uh, 2 and 12, because 2 and 12 also multi multiply to 24. In C, I have the log base 2 of x squared y over the root of z. So this is the, since the x squared and y are multiplied, I'd use the product law and say that's x log of x squared plus the log of y. And then this is divided by the log of z, this quantity, sorry, by the uh, root of z. And so we would go minus, according to the quotient law, the log base 2 of z, now the root of z, or z to the power of a half. Uh, we're asked to write as a sum or difference of logarithms, so I would use the power law here and write this, bring this 2 down and write as 2 log x base 2 and then same with the half here, I bring it down and write as a half times the log of z base 2. The restrictions for this, we have x, y, and z here, they would have to all be non, uh, non-zero or of course non-negative, so they have to all be positive values. Otherwise this quantity would be defined, undefined in, in some place. In the last example, we're asked to simplify each logger expression and, and state any restrictions on the variables, like uh, we stated restrictions up here. There's no restrictions of b because it's all numerical. Of course, 8 and 3 and 4 and 6 are, are not equal to 0 anyway. Now in a here, um, the, um, we're asked to simplify it. So I want to simplify the expression x squared over the root of x. So the root of x, of course, is the same as x to the power of a half. And now, so I want to divide these out, so I want to get a common denominator because I'm going to subtract the exponents, the bases are the same. So think of that 2 as 4 halves, and so I'm getting a common denominator. So if you think of that as 4 halves and subtract 1 half, you get 3 halves. So I could write that as a logarithm of x to the power of 3 halves. And so using that power law, I can bring the 3 halves down in front and write as 3 halves times the log of x. And of course the restriction there is the only value variable we have is x, so x would have to be greater than 0. For b, the cube root of x to the fourth means x to the four thirds. Remember the, uh, the power it's raised to is the numerator and the exponent. The root is the denominator. The root of x means x to the power of a half. Those are added, that's why I'm multiplying these two uh, powers of x. And we're subtracting this log, so we would divide that by now the x, the root of x is x to the power of a half, and then of course it's raised to the 6. Now I want to simplify all this. Now uh, a half times 6, remember power over power, you multiply the exponent, so that's 3. So the exponent here is actually 3 when we simplify this. So I want to get a common denominator, so remember we have x cubed in the denominator. Uh, 3 and 2 are the denominators in the, in the numerator here, so uh, I want to get a common denominator, of course that would be 6. So then I would multiply this by 2 top and bottom to make it 8, 6. And I would multiply this by 3 top and bottom to make this 3, 6. 
And so uh, the 3 down here, I want it to be 6 as well. So I would change the 3 into 18, 6. Uh, multiplying in top and bottom by 6. So 3 is the same as 18, 6. So uh, I would add these. So 8, 6 and 3, 6 is 11, 6. And of course we would subtract 18, 6. So uh, we have 11, 6 minus 18, 6. And of course that's negative 7, 6. So uh, again, like I did in here, I brought the uh, power, the 3 halves or uh, exponent down in front. So I would then simplify that to negative 7, 6 log x. And the restriction here again, x would have to be greater than 0. And that's the end of the lesson.